here, so is your podcast. We're at Rhode Island Comic Con. I'm talking to Mark Parisi from Off the Mark, who is celebrating 35 years of syndication, which is amazing. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing very good. Thank you. So what is Off the Mark? Off the Mark is a single panel cartoon, uh, offbeat, uh, pretty much. I guess the closest thing would be Far Side-ish, you know, kind of like, you know, and who texted you this? And, you know, you see the crotch of the, you know, just kind of um, one-shot jokes. And you've been doing that for 35 years? 35 years. That's incredible. How do you keep thinking of new one-shot jokes after so many? Like, don't you feel like, you're, like you've done it? <laughs> every day. I feel, yeah, I feel like I'm empty every day. And so it's, it's um, always amazing if I can come up with another one, even especially after 35 years, I, you know, hopefully not repeating myself. Yeah, that's, and you have a lot of books here, so it looks like you're, you're doing it. You're coming yeah. up with them. <laughs> yeah, most of these are compilations, so, you know, going back year by year. And you're, is it self-syndicated? Is, there, is that right? Or? Uh, I started self-syndication for the first 10 years, but now I'm with um, uh, Universal. Okay. And um, Universal um, uh, Syndication. Uh, they, they changed the name to Andrews McNeil, so I've been with them for a while. So they're great. And they help you with, um, like, distribution. Do they help put these books together, or is it more just, like, in newspapers? Yeah, it's more newspaper. These, these are, like, a self-publishing um, thing. But they, um, yeah, they syndicate it to newspapers. So I, I will send them my batch of cartoons, and they have a series of um, salespeople, and they um, distribute it that way. That's awesome. That probably takes a lot of the pressure off, so you can just do the work. Yeah, yeah, that was not, yeah, when I did that for 10 years, that was not fun, that part. Trying to contact the different newspapers and figure out who the uh, proper editor was to contact, that was a lot of work. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, as, as a creator, you probably just want to do the fun part and come up with the drawings right. and the cards. <laughs> fun part. Just, my whole life, I just want to do the fun part. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, can you hear there over that? I, I put it on directional, so hopefully it's picking you up, but I figured just let them finish, and I'll just clip this little part out. All right. <laughs> Start again. Hey, nice to meet you. Uh, so how does the National Cartoonist Society fit into everything? Uh, I've been a uh, member of the National Cartoonist Society, I think, since 1991. And um, they're a fraternal organization that um, supports cartoonists, and it it's, it's really helped my career. I, I got to meet people who worked at syndicates. I got to uh, meet other cartoonists who are doing the same thing that I'm doing. So uh, every year they have a convention, and it's in different parts of the country. Uh, this year it was in Kansas City, where my syndicate is. It's been, like, really all over the country. And they have an awards. Um, so I, see, this is an award I won for best... Uh, newspaper panel called the Rubin Awards, and so, um, and I've met the best people there because when you're a cartoonist, a lot of times um, it's very specific uh, a job to have. Yeah. So when you meet people who are doing the same thing, it it's life affirming. It's like, oh, these are my people. So it really was one of the best choices that I made uh, for my career was to join the NCS. Kind of helps you feel like you're not just an island creating your thing. Yeah, yeah. And like, oh, there are people who understand me. And I, you can use shorthand when you're talking to them. And, <laughs> right. And they also cover, like, for Comic-Con, if you remember the NCS, they cover the booth. And so you can just kind of um, come and stand on this side of the booth, like, if they'll... You know, you pr promoting the NCS and also members of the NCS. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so along with Off the Mark, I see you have Marty Pants. Do you want to talk about that one a little bit? Yeah, this is a um, um, middle grade book, kind of like Wimpy Kid style book, where it's uh, humorous and uh, the storytelling alternates between text and uh, drawings, visuals. And um, this is uh, it's a three book series with Harper Collins, and this is Marty Pants right there and um, he's kind of a kid who has a imagination and he's a little bit of a conspiracy theorist and um, it's, it was just a fun it was a really fun project I got a email from someone who worked at Harper Collins because he had seen Off the Mark and he wondered if I'd ever been interested in writing a book like that and um, of course I had been and um, so that, that was a whole other project because like these are single panel jokes so it's just like you know the the storyline is like that long so right. and this one i had to invent characters and story arcs and so that was a whole different 
learning curve. After like doing the shorter form for so long, did you find it a little harder to have to expand, or was it more freeing that you didn't have to be like six words an uh, hour? That, <laughs> that, that, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, it was, there, there were certain parts of it that were really fun because I could draw something out and have um, something that I suggest in the beginning show up at the end of the book and that, and that type of thing. But it was a big learning curve where uh, I, I still got to use the same kind of humor throughout the book, which was fun, but it was, um, I, I look back at it now and think it's fun, but at the time it was really hair pulling, you know, <laughs> difficult. Right. In hindsight, uh, yeah, I remember it as fun, but it was really kind of, uh, it, it's actually one of the proudest things I've done to be able to write a book. Because oh, that's awesome. It's one of those things where, like, could I ever do that? Was it planned on a trilogy from the beginning, or did you just keep getting more ideas? <laughs> that's funny, because when he, fir when, I, when he first was interested in me writing a book, he didn't mention, so I figured, okay, I'll write a book. And then when the contract came, it was for three books, and I was like, I have to <laughs> yeah, do it two more one. times, right? <laughs> and so, yeah, it kind of gets, um, I don't want to say trapped into it, but it's like, all right, once you're forced, you know, to do something a little uh, out of your comfort zone, then you just kind of have to you know, right, get yeah. it. And that's what made it so fun. It was like, I, I always hear that from artists. It's like, if you're a little bit out of your comfort zone, that's right where you should be. You need that you know? deadline breathing down your neck. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, for the first book, it took me over a year. It was, it was a long process, maybe a year and a half. For the second book, the contract, I had eight months to do it. So like, all right, I'm writing it in eight months. Right. You know, yeah. it was. Don't have a choice. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. That's awesome. Um, so you want to tell people who aren't at Rhode Island Comic Con where they can find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. Um, Mark underscore Parisi underscore OTM, I believe. Uh, you can find me on um, Facebook or offthemark.com. So if you Google Mark Parisi, uh, you know, you'll get, you'll get options. Awesome. Well, Mark, thank you for taking the time. It looks like the doors are opening, so it's going to be a big day. All right. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. You too. All right.